Many people know already who EA is, but for those who don't, I'll have a little context for you. EA is a games company based in California who for the last 30 years have been making games for both the PC and console. Their reach and influence has grown to the point that they are now the fourth largest video game company by revenue. This has been achieved through subsidiaries that they've either bought or created themselves. Doing it this way, EA has knowingly or unknowingly caused the deaths and closings of many game studios, be it from under their control or trying to exert control in the market. Of these countless murders, this video will discuss some of the more big time kills. Let's start with one of their more infamous ones, and the death of a personal childhood favorite. Starting off this list is one studio anyone over 18 could remember fondly, Pandemic Studios. In their 11 year run, they made classic games that anyone could remember with great admiration. Some of these include the original Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 and for the Xbox and PS2 in the early 2000s. Along with this, they were also the creators of Destroy All Humans franchise that also came out during the 6th generation. In 2008, the company was acquired by EA from their original owners VG Holding Corp. Shortly after, in February 2009, EA closed their offices in Australia. Later that same year, EA cut 1,500 jobs globally, to which many of these were in pandemic itself, and the studio was officially closed by EA not too long after that. Remaining staff were taken into EA Los Angeles, and the rest found new work in studios like 343, Treyarch, and Infinity Ward. Starting as Tolerous Impact Systems, Bullfrog grew in the early 90s with games like Populous and Powermonger. They grew to hold sizable chunks of the gaming market given their small size. Their popularity was held in such high regards, and after a few more games they were given countless offers to license films for their work out in Hollywood, and even a deal with McDonald's. Their acquisition was finalized in 1995 after almost two years of negotiation. Shortly after being bought, founder Peter Molyneux became VP over at EA before he quit to create his own studio, Lionhead, which also closed down a few years later. Back over at Bullfrog, they were having concerns with how EA was exercising their control over the little studio. It was only a studio of 35, but it quickly grew to be 150 as EA prepared their studio to churn out games at a more rapid rate. With their loss of creative control and a new direction, many of the original employees felt dissatisfied with their new line of work. Eventually, this decay ended in 2001 with the remaining members of Bullfrog being incorporated and merged with EA UK, leaving only a legacy of games like Syndicate and Magic Carpet that many wish would be remastered by a studio that no longer existed. This Canadian-based company was primarily remembered for their various Need for Speed games, the NHL games for 2000-2005, and the cult classic Skate franchise. In 2002, they were acquired by EA, and from 2002 to 2005, they were part of the EA Canada family before branching off to be an independent studio directly under EA rather than a particular branch. In 2008, they closed their main offices and moved operations to EA Canada's facilities. This is where they would be laid to rest after layoffs in 2000 decreased their population productivity. They quickly changed the name one more time to Quick Lime Games before closing in 2013. The rights to the franchises they had worked on for years were transferred to new studios. Primarily, Need for Speed was taken over by Ghost Games. Former members to this day work on new racing projects under different studios like Ubisoft's The Crew. These next few are what I believe are next for the Butcher's Chopping Block at this moment in time. Maxis Softworks, as it was originally called, is famous for their simulation games, like SimCity and The Sims. Along with that, their library included the Windows classic game Space Cadet Pinball, these games were used to achieve much of their early success, but nearing the end of the 90s, they had went into some sort of decline. In 1997, Maxis was bought by EA, which gave the studio an actual boost in popularity and quality for their games. Over the next decade, they pumped out several more SimCity games and The Sim games, but trouble hit in 2008 with Spore, when it was harshly panned by both fans and critics, resulting in founder Wilbur Wright's departure from the studio. 
Another hit came in the 2013 iteration of SimCity, especially in regards to the always online play that they tried to push, killing this franchise. In 2015, the studio in Emeryville was closed following a restructuring of the EA organization, which consolidated much of what was left of the Maxis team into EA Mobile Division. To this day, this is where they've stayed, and personally I doubt the studio has much left in it before it's entirely absorbed and the Maxis name is no more. Formed in 1995, Bioware started as a studio of just three med school grads who enjoyed games recreationally. Most of their earlier work was role-playing games like Baldur's Gate, and later found critical acclaim with their Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic in 2003 and with Jade Empire in 2005. In 2007, EA was also bought by EA through their owners VG Holding Corp along with Pandemic. Unlike Pandemic under EA, Bioware was able to thrive under its new scenery, it was able to finish out its Mass Effect trilogy to a subpar ending and star a new IP under the name Dragon Age, which received just as much critical acclaim as Mass Effect did. All good seems to be showing on the surface, just a bit below they are suffering from the same problems that killed many of the studios I've already talked about before. In 2004, their new IP Shadow Realms was cancelled. Several creative leads, including Mass Effect creator Casey Hudson's Dragon Age writer David Gaudier, and developers of Mass Effect Andromeda Chris Wine and Chris Stafer also left during its development. Recently, in due part to the poor performance of Mass Effect, EA froze the franchise's development and lowered the Montreal branch from a lean development team to just a support team. It might be Anthem that could make or break this studio, and given Bioware's legacy of delays, I assume it won't meet its 2018 deadline either. Now for a few honorable mentions that didn't have much going on that needed to be discussed. <laughs> 